Today we're going to look at a tool called Z.Lua which claims to make it faster to move around your Linux file system by basically remembering which folders you frequently visit and then providing a shorthand way to actually access it. So for example, let's say we wanted to go somewhere like my screenshots directory. Well, I know that's going to be located in my pictures directory and then obviously in screenshots. But with Z.Lua what we can do is just say Z and then screen. And the way that this works is Z.Lua has a list of the folders you most frequently visit and then the top match that has screen in its path is the one you're going to be CDing into. So in this case, that's going to take us to our screenshots. But what if we have two folders with the exact same name? So for example, I have a .local directory in my home directory and then I have a copy of it in my repos directory which I use to back up. So in that case, what we can do is actually specify extra information in the path that isn't in the path of the other directory. So for example, let's say we say Z, RE, and then a dot .local. So I know that RE is going to be in the path for this one because I have the repos folder in that path, but it's not going to be in the path for the other one. So in this case, it's going to take us into the repos version. But if I just do Z dot .local, that's going to take us to the one in my home directory. So you don't have to do anything special to train Z.Lua. All you have to do is just switch between directories in your shell and the weights will be updated as you go. Now, if you want to check those weights, you can do that with Z-L and that will print out the weights for your entire database. Now, a weight is basically just a score of how frequently you visit that folder. So this is just printing out the weights for everything, but if you just want to limit it to a specific query, so for example, let's limit it to just screen. So in this case, as you can see, we have two matches for this. We have screenshots and we have MPV screenshot. And the one that has the highest weight is screenshots. So that's why it was what we CD'd into before. And you can also specify a query that has multiple terms as well. So Z-L, RE and then dot local like we saw before and in this case that is the only thing that's returned by that query but if you don't care about the weights and you just want to see what's going to be returned without CDing you can do Z-E and then pass in the same query so in this case we can do Z-E screen and that's going to say that we're going to CD into our screenshots. If for whatever reason after the training process there are some weights you don't like, you can always just CD in and out of a directory multiple times and that will actually go and update them. So for example, let's go into my pictures and into my screenshots and let's go back to home and let's do the same thing again and we'll do the same thing a couple of times and then check what the weights actually look like. So if we do Z-L and then screen again, as we will see, the weight for that is now much higher. So if for whatever reason the folders aren't ordered in the way that seems like they're the most frequent, that is basically the easiest way to go about fixing it. You may have noticed that Z.Lua doesn't actually care where in our file system we actually are. You could go from your pictures directory all the way to your root directory if you really wanted to. But if you just want to limit it to subdirectories from the directory you're currently in, that can be done with Z-C. So for example, let's go into my pictures directory and then if I try to do Z-C and go to .local, in this case, that's not actually going to work because the .local directory isn't a subdirectory of the pictures. So in this case, we could only go to places like my screenshots or various other folders that are in my pictures. And on the flip side, you have Z-B, which limits you to folders that are parents of the current directory. So once again, we couldn't go somewhere like our .local directory, but we could go somewhere back to, say, my home directory, for example. Now, if you'd much rather have a selector instead of an automatic CD, that can be done with Z-I and Z-Capital-I. Now, both of these require some sort of query. So in this case, we're going to pass in screen. So that's just going to return the results for our screenshot directories. And in this case, let's say we put in two. So two is going to match on the MPV screenshots, and that will CD us into that one. Now, if we do Z-Capital-I, this is going to be using FZF instead. So this works exactly as you'd expect FZF to. I'm I'm sure I don't need to explain this. Being FCF though, if you have a big list, it might be easier because then you can actually fuzzy find which directory you want to use. So let's just go to the MPV screenshots again. And as we can see, now we're back here. If you just want to reject the weights completely and go to the most recently visited directory, that can be done with Z-T. Now, the most recently visited directory that matches the screen query was our MPV screenshot. So in this case, it's going to take us to that one instead of the regular screenshots directory. Now, there are a couple of different modes that this can operate in, which are all described on the GitHub page, but I've actually been using it in enhanced mode this entire time. Now, for the most part, enhanced and regular mode are fairly similar, but enhanced mode does actually 
actually come with some really neat advantages. So one thing is that if a directory isn't actually in z.lua's database, so say you go somewhere like, I don't know, your root directory. Now, doing this with regular z.lua won't actually do anything because if it's not in the database, it just doesn't care. But if you have enhanced mode enabled and it's not in the database, it will basically just act as a CD. Also, when you do a match, if you just have one term in there, it only cares about the last segment of the actual path. So for example, in the case of my config directories, so if we look in here, I've got multiple directories with .config in their path, but if we just do z.config, it will always take us just to our config directory because none of these other ones actually end in .config. And this is done because it's usually much easier to remember the last part of the path than anything else along the chain. And also, if the match is the current directory that you're in, it will ignore that and go to whatever's in second place. So for example, let's go over to my screenshots. And if I try to do Z screen again, in regular mode, it would just take us back into our screenshots. In this case though, it's gonna take us to our MPV screenshots because that is in second place. Now, if you do wanna use this for yourself, make sure that you sit down and properly train it. Now, I know that it's probably gonna be hard to find like a couple of hours to go through all of your directories and making it so it can actually learn what you normally do. But if nothing else, my suggestion is get it working, get everything set up, and then just go about your day as you normally would, maybe for a day or a couple of days, before you even bother touching the application because if it hasn't learned what folders you frequently visit, even when you're running in enhanced mode and you can just use it as a CD, it's not gonna be that useful. It needs to learn what you actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, and once it's learned that, I think this is actually a really, really useful application. Now getting it set up is very simple. Basically all you have to do is go and download the script file for it from the GitHub page, or I guess you could install it with a package manager. It's just a single script that's all self-contained though, so you might as well just do it through the manual method. And basically, in whatever your RC file is, find the line you have to add to it. So for example, if you're in bash, you would add this line in. If you're in ZSH, you would add this line in. If you're in a POSIX shell, you'd add this line. If you're in fish, you'd add this line. Pretty straightforward. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier is that if you're using fish or ZSH, this does support tab completion and the tab completion is basically whatever is in your database right now. So you can't tab complete just regular paths, which is a little bit annoying for enhanced mode. But if you wanted to go somewhere like say your .config directory and you accidentally press tab because you're still used to working with CD, that will still work just fine. But if you try to say, go into somewhere like your var directory and that isn't in your database, that won't work. But if you actually go and add that in and then you try to do the same thing, so now we try to look for that one, as we can see, the var directory is now there. Now, I've been running this for a couple of days and honestly, I'm really starting to like it. When I first heard about the GitHub project, I thought it was gonna be fairly gimmicky and kind of dumb and I wouldn't really, I guess, stick with it for that long, but once you start thinking in the way that z.lua works and you start forgetting about the rest of your path and just remembering where it is you want to jump to and if you need some extra information along the way, just some random other information about the path. Once you start thinking in that sort of way, it's actually a really quick way to move around. Now, as I've mentioned before, you do need to make sure it's trained properly because otherwise it's going to be basically useless. But once it is, I think this is a really, really useful tool. Now, I have noticed from time to time there will be a really long delay when trying to CD, but that seems to just be once every like 50 or 60 uses. I don't know exactly what's causing that. Maybe it's just something about updating the database file or something like that. But besides those points, it adds absolutely no noticeable delay. And yeah, I, I think it's a really good tool all around. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Yoakim Corbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan Monster, Chico Bento, Joseph Peter D. Road, Tony Brennan, Donald, John Mark McKell, Nate Dog Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, I'll put links down below to my Patreon, subscribe style, Libra Pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library Odyssey. Beat shoot and all of those sort of platforms if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.